and we're live now. <clears throat> Good morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are in the world, and welcome to Ubuntu on Air. My name is Jose, and I'm a Ubuntu member broadcasting live from Peru. Today we've got a question and answer session with Jonah Bacon, the Ubuntu Community Manager. So make sure to ask all your questions at hash ubuntu on air on rc.freenode.net. We've got an embedded RC widget on the web page, which is ubuntuonair.com. It's down there. So make sure to ask all your questions. I'll be reading them aloud. So go ahead, Jono, and introduce yourself. All right. So let's. Uh, I guess what we'll, we'll do is we'll give it a few minutes for people to join. I just posted to Google Plus and Twitter and all that kind of stuff. Um, and we've got that little embedded web web, uh, uh, web IRC widget down there. Feel free to ask your questions. All you need to do to ask a question is type in the word "question" in capital letters. Uh, and then your question, and I will answer as many as I can. Now, um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is John O'Bacon. I work as the Ubuntu Community Manager at Canonical. Um, I have a team of uh, five people who work in different parts of the, of the Ubuntu community, and, and my goal is to try and build a fun, productive, and enjoyable community for people to participate in. Uh, traditionally, the Ubuntu community has been very much one in which we've worked together to build an operating system. Um, but as we move forward with um, you know, with the phone and with the cloud and the desktop and various other things, um, increasingly uh, we're building uh, different types of communities, communities of advocates, communities of app developers and more and more. So um, the aim of these, uh, of Q these Q and A sessions is where you can come and you can basically ask any questions that you want and I can do my best to answer them. So um, let's give it a few minutes for folks to type in their questions. Now, here's the thing. You can type, you can ask questions about anything you want. Anything. If you want to ask me about Ubuntu or just my perspectives on open source or free software, anything that, anything that you like. Uh, feel free to ask anything, 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 anything. Um, also, I'd like to invite you to ask, if, if, you, if you have kind of like a burning question about Ubuntu, but you feel a bit awkward, you don't want to be rude or whatever else, you're not going to be rude. Ask the most pointed question you like in the world. Um, it, I'm not going to be offended. <laughs> My goal here is that you can ask anything and there is no boundaries. The only thing I ask is that you don't ask technical support questions. If you ask a question about how to get your graphics card working, this is not really the best kind of environment for us to do that. The best place to do that is really going to be uh, on Ask Ubuntu. So we've got a couple of questions in here. First one is from uh, Gymnastics. Welcome, Gymnastics. Uh, when is ROM going to be published? So I assume that this is um, regarding the phone. When is, when, is, when is a phone ROM going to be available? Uh, right now, it's not entirely clear when there's going to be some images that are going to be published. Um, we're going to need to... So we obviously announced, <coughs> announced the phone yesterday. And uh, uh, with, you know, with every big kind of product announcement, there's a series of things that need to happen to get to a point where you can actually release software. Um, I'd imagine you can probably expect some kind of ROMs to be out probably around the 1304 timeline, um, but don't take my word on that. That's my kind of best guess based upon what I know internally. Um, you know, right now we basically have a code base that works. It demonstrates the product, uh, but there's still lots of work to be done to get the phone to a point where it is the kind of thing that you could install on a handset and use. Um, in tandem with that, we're also working on optimizing the foundational layer of Ubuntu. So. Um, there's, Ubuntu essentially has two layers to it. You've got the foundation layer, which is the kernel, um, everything that you need to get a display up and running, and then you've got the, the the kind of like the desktop or the user interface, Unity, and the applications that sit on top of that. Um, so we traditionally break these out into two teams. We have a foundations team and the desktop team. Um, on one hand, most of the work with the phone has obviously gone into ensuring that the that Unity is is customized for a phone. But we need to get the kernel. Um, we need to get the kernel co work completed, so it, w it recognizes the hardware on the phone that you install it on. We need to make sure that the display server is is is, is running quickly uh, and efficiently. Um, so a lot of the work that we did on the Nexus Seven work to to optimize Ubuntu for the Nexus Seven tablet is going to benefit the phone work as well. Um, so we're not in a position right now where we can really just throw a ROM out there and you've got something that you can install. Uh, we really need to do this foundational work and the and the uh, the upper desktop work before we can put something out there that people can install on their phones. Um, but I'm as looking forward to it as you are <laughs> to test it out. Um, also, just to let you all know, um, next week, at C I know there's going to be a lot of questions about the phone today. 
Next week, um, the Consumer Electronics Show is taking place in Las Vegas, and this is where uh, we're going to be uh, we're going to be ex exhibiting um, Ubuntu. There, we've got a big booth there. There's an army of canonical people are going to be out there. Uh, we're going to be talking about the phone and the desktop and the cloud. We're going to be talking uh, about Ubuntu One, and I'm going to be there for the full week, and I'm going to be talking about developers. So um, I'm going to uh, take a ton of photographs. I'm going to see if I can take some video as well, so you folks can check out. Um, the stuff that we're doing at the booth. It's going to be a pretty insane week because I'm going to be doing booth work. I'm going to be talking to people all day, but I'm sure I can fit in some time to, to get some of this content online so you folks can check it out. So stay tuned, tuned for that. Um, so question from Tux Cal, uh, or Tux Calais. What display server does the phone uh, currently use? Right now, I believe that it's using Xorg, uh, which is the same display server that we're using uh, for the Ubuntu desktop. Um, we're we're evaluating different display servers. I mean, one question that we get all the time is, you know, when are you folks moving to Wayland? Well, and this is largely based on, upon a statement that Mark Shuttleworth made, I think, about two years ago, which was, Ubuntu's going to ship Wayland in the future. Um, well, two years is a long time in software. Um, I wouldn't count on the guarantee that we're going to be shipping Wayland. Uh, it's something that we're evaluating. We're evaluating other display servers. We're evaluating the best way in which we can, in which we can do this. Um, Things have changed with Ubuntu because we're not just, when when we build Ubuntu, we're not just building Ubuntu for the desktop, we're building it for the cloud. We like to reuse as many of these pieces as possible. Um, so they apply to these different form factors. So as an example, we like to, you know, we standardize in the kernel. We have the Ubuntu kernel and we have uh, customizations towards that kernel for the cloud and customizations towards that kernel for the desktop and for the phone. Uh, likewise, with a display server, we really want the same display server to be able to be used for the phone and the desktop. So it's not as simple as it was where we were just thinking all we need to care about is the desktop. Now we're caring about the phone as well. Um, and in the future, we're no doubt going to care about the tablet as well. So, um, you know, it, it's the, the switch to a new display server is something that's up in the air and there's some technical evaluation going on there. And I'm looking forward to us discussing that more at UDS. App get installed. Great, Nick, by the way. Um, I asked the same question as before. Recently, the search results in the dash is sent to Amazon. I don't care how encrypted the information is. It is still my private searches. Can I be sure that no information at all is sent to Amazon or third parties if I turn off logging in the system settings? Or must I log my own outgoing traffic? So there's two considerations really to, to, to make here. So um, you, can, you can turn off all outgoing traffic in the... Um, in the privacy settings on the, on, the, on the Ubuntu desktop right now. And that won't do any online searches. So when you switch that off, as you mentioned, app get installed, um, when, you, when you switch that off, um, your searches will not go to anyone. They will not leave your machine. They won't go to Canonical, they won't go to Amazon. Nothing will go out. So if, you're, if you absolutely only want a local search experience on your machine and you don't want to search online for anything, then you can switch it off in the system set in the privacy settings, and you're all good to go. Now, one of the problems that we have right now is that um, is that the scopes that we install in Ubuntu, that we ship in Ubuntu, the policy that we have is they need to listen to the privacy settings, but they don't. Um, there's no guarantee that a scope will actually do that. Right now, it's a policy. So, if if you install a random scope off the internet uh, or a lens, rather. Um, it doesn't necessarily. It's it, it it's a policy. You know, we, we ask people with a with a scope or a lens, please listen to the privacy settings and respect those settings. It's not actually physically enforced. So so a piece of work that's going on right now is to build app armor insulation around this. So uh, if a if a naughty lens tries to ignore this privacy settings, it won't. You know, it um, it it will be blocked. Um, now, you don't need to worry about that for Ubuntu 12.10 because obviously we vet all of the scopes and lenses that go into the product. And uh, in fact, most of the scopes and lenses we've built are canonical. So uh, when you switch it off in the privacy settings, you absolutely know that your information is not going to be going online. I hope that answers your question. Um, IMTHK2, IMFK2, with Ubuntu phone using Qt, do you plan to move away from GNOME and GTK on the desktop? No, not at all. So, um, for I think it was maybe two years ago, or possibly three, maybe three years ago, uh, we made the announcement that Qt was going to be a 
uh, first class citizen um, in, on the Ubuntu desktop. Um, and what that means is um, we're going to ship Qt in the archive so you can install it as officially maintained um, dependency in Ubuntu. Um, and uh, um, you know you can write applications. If you write an application that uses Qt, then you can be assured that someone can install the depend the dependencies can be pulled in so people can run that application easily on Ubuntu. That's not going to change with GTK. So GTK is the top level first class citizen in uh, in Ubuntu, and so is Qt. Um, now, there's, again, there's kind of two considerations that we're going to that we're going to make here. One is whether we support Qt and GTK in Ubuntu as a general rule. And then the second question is, what does Canonical spend its money on uh, in terms of writing software? Uh, remember, Ubuntu is a community um, is a community Linux distribution, uh, of which Canonical contributes to those com comments. There's lots of work that goes on um, in the Ubuntu world that doesn't come from Canonical, um, and we want to make sure that people can obviously continue to do that work. So a good example of this is the Ubuntu Accomplishments Project. You know, we have a nice community of people who are working on that. I started doing that in my spare time, and we built this really nice community of people who are working on that. Uh, you know, the viewers written in GTK, we've got the web app and all this kind of stuff. Um, that's not official canonical work at all. Um, so now, so we're, it, it's, it's extremely unlikely. I mean, never say never, but it's extremely unlikely that GTK uh, and GNOME is, is going to be removed from the desktop, that we just depend on too much of it. There's, a huge chunk of what we ship on the Ubuntu desktop is GTK and GNOME. Um, um, just because we're Canonical's paying more and more of an interest in Qt doesn't necessarily mean we're going to get rid of GTK and GNOME in the desktop. Now, I do think that Canonical is going to spend more of its investment on writing Qt apps, just because uh, you know we're focusing more and more on on the Qt version of Unity. Uh, and I think that you know when you hire staff, you hire them with skills, and we're going to want to consolidate those skills around certain toolkits. So I do think that we'll see that, but you will still be able to get GTK and GNOME applications on, in, on Ubuntu. Uh, next question is, um, Tux Calais, will the phone OS be compatible with all my standard Linux programs? Now, the phone is just Ubuntu. It's Ubuntu with a different Unity UI and some customized foundational layers. So the phone is essentially, the phone is essentially a kernel that is obviously optimized for um, 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 a low-profile phone device, um, and it's uh, you know that's got support for the sensors, the radios, and whatever else. And then you've got Unity, which is obviously the touch-centric phone Unity. Um, but it's just Ubuntu, so you should theoretically be able to run any Ubuntu application on that, so long as it works for that particular architecture. So, for example, if the phone is an Intel phone, then you should be able to run any Intel application, uh, any x86 application on there. If it's an ARM phone, you should be able to run any ARM application on there. Um, now, of course, you you know, if you run OpenOffice or LibreOffice rather on a phone, it's not going to look very good because you know, the UI is not designed for a phone screen. So some of these applications are going to need new user interfaces defining. Um, but yes, you should be able to run any application. Uh, sip of coffee. Next question is from, uh, let's see. Uh, ah, Rafal Silak, who's a Ubuntu accomplishments contributor. There are already. Um, are there already any plans concerning root access limitations for the Ubuntu Phone OS? I mean, tricks similar to what may be observed on Android, where you where you need to grant yourself root access in order to modify the OS's core components, which voids the warranty. This makes sense as it is a way to prevent users from screwing up system stuff, but results in the OS being completely open, as some things can't be done by any application, or, or, or not being completely open. Right? Um, and need to be done by something built into the OS instead. Are there any plans to keep Ubuntu phone open in this matter, or will mobile manufacturers and vendors be able to lock down the phone by limiting root access? It's a really great, really great question, um, um, uh, Rafal. I, uh, to be honest with you, I don't know 100% uh, what the answer to this is going to be. I suspect that this is really going to be down to the manufacturer. Um, the reason why most phones are locked down to the degree that they're locked down is because um, the, one of the most expensive um, aspects of bringing a, a software or hardware product to market is support. Uh, you know, when someone pre-installs Ubuntu on a laptop or they pre-install it on a phone or whatever, you know, um, just providing uh, that 
building that product is one thing, but then you've got to deal with returns and support questions and um, you know warranties and all that kind of stuff. And that's where things get really complicated and expensive. Um, that's the reason why so many of these phone manufacturers lock them down. So I think our policy at Canonical and with Ubuntu is going to be we're providing this mobile operating system um, and we'd love it to be open, but at the end of the day, this is something that is a piece of software that someone's going to take, uh, a company's going to take and deploy it on a hardware device and ship it. So therefore, if they choose on their product that they want it to be closed, then it's really their prerogative whether they do that. So sadly, I, 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 what I don't think is going to happen is I don't think Canonical is going to go out and say, if you want to ship Ubuntu phone, you have to keep it open. Because if we did that, no one would ship it. So. Um, Sepisode asks, will the Ubuntu phone image be available for the Nexus 7 or the, or the Nexus 10? My guess is no, uh, because the Nexus 7 and the Nexus 10 are tablets. Um, um, and it wouldn't make a tremendous amount of sense to have an image for that. On one hand, it would be useful to, to see it running. Um, but I, I'd be surprised if there's going to be a formal image that's going to be out there. Um, now, I think that when the phone code is available, someone's going to build an image just because a lot of people have been playing with, a, uh, playing, um, with Ubuntu on the Nexus 7. Um, App Get Install follows up with another question. Proprietary drivers versus open graphics drivers in Ubuntu? Question. Um, I don't know what the question is. Proprietary drivers versus open graphics drivers in Ubuntu? Well, we support both. So um, naturally, we always try to gravitate towards open drivers, but in some cases, hardware doesn't work without proprietary drivers. Um, if you can, you can probably hear a baby scream, and that's my newly born son, by the way. So just try and ignore that. He's seven weeks, so I'm sorry. Um, new father. Tux Calais, um, uh, will I have a root shell and be able to use app get uh, and have access uh, to the to the repositories I currently use? Um, if you mean on the phone, again, I answered that question earlier on about whether there's going to be root. Um, and I suspect that the repository is going to be customized for the phone because installing a desktop application on the phone is not going to be useful to, to general users. Uh, all right, keep your questions coming in, folks. Remember, if you've got a question, please put the word question in front of it because otherwise I can't pick it out from all the general chatter. Um, Uh, INET Pro, is there someone who will provide a summary of the Q&A afterwards? Many people like me do, uh, do not have unlimited bandwidth available uh, to watch videos. Um, uh, I won't be providing a summary. I'm not going to have the time to write all of this up. But if somebody can, what would be awesome, maybe we could do this as a community project. Maybe if there's some folks out there who uh, would like to help uh, document the Q&A, um, so those people who don't have time to watch the video, um, can can read it, that would be cool. So if any of your folks want to do that, please get in touch with me at john.ubuntu.com. Oh, Jose's going to do that. We'll talk about that later. I just want to um, just take a second to um, really highlight Jose, um, who has been um, organizing all of this kind of stuff. He's been doing this tremendous job with, with, uh, with Ubuntu on Air and to, to the point whereby, um, you know, uh, for the last couple of days, I was out of the house quite a bit, so I wasn't checking my email. And Jose was trying to, like, lock down this Q&A session, and he phoned me, uh, which was awesome. So, you know, Jose is like a perfect example of a community member, so kudos. Um, um, okay, so uh, App Get Install says, any thoughts about Zorin OS? I've never even heard of Zorin OS. It sounds like some kind of character from Zorro. We have a question about Python in the phone, which is, will I be able to develop with Python and use things like GDK and Pygame? So um, right now, if you want to build a, an application for the phone, uh, right now we don't support Python. We um, support HTML5 and QML or native OpenGL. Um, um, so uh, let, me, let me provide a little bit of context around this. Um, 
Ubuntu as a platform has always supported multiple programming languages. So you know, if you want to write um, if you want to write a Python app, you can do. If you want to write an application in C or C++ or uh, Mono or whatever you might want to do. Um, and we've always provided the capabilities to do that. Um, the, on a desktop, you've got a, a much more horsepower to do that. Um, the challenge that you have with a phone is you have a very constrained uh, user interface model. You've got a small screen, um, so you need to you, you have a small screen, screen, and then you've got constrained resources as well. Um, so on a desktop, you can use this whole big screen, and you can have lots of toolbar buttons, and you can, you can have uh, big canvases and whatever else. On a phone, it's a little different. You, know, you have a much smaller uh, uh, chunk of real estate, uh, screen real estate. Um, then from a performance perspective, you don't have as much horsepower um, with a phone. Now, some of you may say, but what are these, a lot of these phones are quad-core phones. That's true, but there's a lot of software that's always running. You've always got the radios running. You've always got the screen that's up and running. You've got to take, have considerations such as battery life. Um, when the SDK team was assessing the best, um, the best uh, platform to use to write applications, um, it was a long discussion, and I was involved in some of this. And this has been a long, drawn-out discussion for the last couple of years. Um, Canonical is a company that was born in the culture of Python. Uh, we all love Python. I mean, I I'm I write Python code. I love Python. Um, but one of the problems that we've been having recently is um, a good example of this is with scopes. Is that you can write scopes in Python for the for the dash. But if you've got a ton of scopes that are running and they're all written in Python, you start really feeling the performance hit. Um, so increasingly, we've been trying to find um, a good platform that is um, that is simple to use, but has the performance benefits. Um, so some of you will know this, but Mark Shuttleworth has been taking an increasing interest in Go, which is a, a language that was developed at Google, which is kind of a high-level looking language. It solves a bunch of problems that people have found in Python. Um, and it's super efficient. You can actually compile it. It's not just interpreted. Um, so in assessing, you know, we could have just said for the phone, as an example, you know what, screw you guys. You have to write applications in C. Um, but who wants to write applications for a phone in C? I mean, no one likes writing C. People who write C do it because they have to. People like writing, uh, writing software in high-level languages. They like writing applications in, in Python, or they like write, writing applications in C Sharp. Um, so uh, that's the reason why we felt that QML was a really nice middle ground. Because on one hand, I, I don't know if many of you have seen it, but QML is this really slick, um, kind of uh, declarative language that, that's part of the Qt uh, platform. So you can do really, really, you can do like really nice transitions and effects and you can, you can build beautiful interfaces really quickly and easily. It's kind of like a mixture of CSS and kind of like a declarative kind of markup language. But the benefit of that is that, that, that QML is back-ended onto a C++ platform that Qt's written in. So you can write applications using Qt, which is in C++, which is super fast, and it's a really nice API. Or you can you can use QML um, and write a, a simpler application uh, much, much more quickly. Uh, we're obviously supporting HTML5 because we want the web to be a part of the phone as well, and HTML5 is, is, a, is an awesome framework for that. Um, so at, out of the gate, it looks like we're not going to support Python. But I think we're supporting a language uh, and a platform that will be of interest to Python users. Um, you know, uh, a buddy of mine just recently played with with QML, and he's a Python person. He loves it, as an example. Um, and you know, who knows? It wouldn't surprise me if in the future we'll provide the ability for people to write applications in Python. We just won't recommend it to people just due to the due to the Python limitations, uh, the performance limitations. Sorry, long-winded uh, answer, but I hope that answers your question. <coughs> Um, all right, Tony, no one. Question, why, Jono, why make the phone announcement now when release is so far out? Will developer builds be available early? This is a really good question. The reason why we announced it was because, uh, I want to be really clear about this. The announcement yesterday was not for a product that you can put in your pocket and use. It, it was for um, a new platform that we're building as part of the Ubuntu project. So. Um, the reason why we announced it is because 
the phone is now at a point, the design's mature enough, and the implementation's mature enough at a point where we can start talking to operators and handset manufacturers um, to, to bring uh, a product to market that, that runs the Ubuntu, the Ubuntu uh, OS. Now, we had two options in how we could have done this. We could either done all of this completely in top secret, completely privately, and had a series of private boardroom meetings where we go and we take the phone OS and we present it to these handset manufacturers. And if someone bites, that's awesome. Um, uh, if someone bites and they, you know, they, they want to ship a product, then that's great. And if they don't bite, then we quietly kill it. That could have been one approach. That's not the culture of what we do at Canonical. A much better way of doing things is that we announce it and we get people interested and excited about it. And we also bring the community in as part of this. So we didn't just, yesterday we didn't just announce the phone, but we also announced that we want to encourage the community to participate in how we build the first raft of applications um, that are going to run on the phone. So we have at developer.ubuntu.com, there's a form in there that someone can fill in. They can say, I have this level of experience in QML and I want to write, I want to help with these applications. We did this yesterday. We had, we had over 500 people say they want to help. 500. I couldn't believe it when I, when I, when I heard about that. Um, so we have a tremendous amount of interested people who want to help out with the phone, with the phone application development. So you know, part of it is you know, we have this product that we're really proud of, that we think it's really cool. We want to be transparent in sharing that with the world, but also we want to get the community interested in participating. We want to get the, the SDK preview out there so people can play with it, that kind of stuff. Um, so it may seem a little early, but um, I think everyone would agree that it's better to know about these things publicly than to keep all of this stuff secret. Uh, Beard of Omens. I always love that nickname. Good to see you again, Beard of Omens. QML needs a C++ application compiled to use it. Will it be possible to write an app just QML with no C++? Yeah, that's the beauty of QML. Like, I'll give you an example to this myself. I used to, when I first got involved in, um, in, in Linux, uh, the first website I ever built was this, this the first thing I, project I ever worked on was this website called Linux UK. Um, and then I really wanted to be part of an open source project. I actually joined the KDE project uh, for, for a period of time. And the only way in which you could contribute to KDE back then, this was in the pre-1.0 days, was to write in Q, and you had to write in C++. Uh, I didn't know how to write in C++, so I learned C++. And to be honest with you, I hated every second of it, because I'm, I'm not that... I've always had a firm belief that programming languages work with different types of brains. So, you know, for some brains, uh, you know, for Jason Smith, who used to work in Unity, C++ works with his brain. Um, for me, Python works with my brain. High-level languages work with my brain, not lower-level languages like C++. I'm sure some of you are going to say C++ is a higher-level language, but you people are in crack. Um, the beauty about this is that you can write... Uh, if you want to write something like um, a note-taking application, as an example, uh, you can write something like that in QML. You don't have to write a line of C++. And QML is this really beautiful, uh, is this really beautiful um, declarative language that you can use to write these applications. And then we provide the Ubuntu phone components layer, which is essentially the set of widgets that you can use to build something for the phone. So if you go to developer.ubuntu.com, you can find a tutorial about how you get started doing this. And you know, Cube comes with this really nice Cube Creator toolkit. Um, right now, um, the the SDK preview is basically the stock Q creator, which is kind of like an IDE. But in the future, the SDK will be all themed and, and, and designed uh, to look like an Ubuntu development environment. It'll be integrated with Bazaar and Launchpad and all that kind of stuff. Um, App Get Install asked, what, uh, what do you think about closed source software, games, Skype, uh, on an open system like GNU Linux, GNU slash Linux? The idea behind Linux is the power of a completely open system. Everyone's got their own viewpoint on this. You know, one of the views that I've always had is that um, you know, ethics. Uh, people often talk about ethics in the free software world, um, and you know, there are some people who believe that it's unethical to use non-free software um, on a free software system such as Ubuntu. There are some people who don't think that Ubuntu is a free software system because we have binary blobs that we ship. Um, in my view, ethics is a very personal thing. It's you know, everyone's got their own definition of what they consider to be okay. Speaking personally, I don't define my ethics by software. I define my ethics by me as a person. Um, I don't feel unethical for using Skype. I use Skype probably every day. Um, I use uh, non-free applications on the web, like Gmail. Um, 
I use non-free applications on my computer, like, like I mentioned Skype earlier on, or Steam. I don't personally feel unethical at all. I consider myself to be a good person, and I don't consider myself to be a bad person just because I use those things. Now, am I supportive of proprietary software? No. Is there a necessity for it at times when a free software alternative doesn't exist? Yes. Um, so I basically use proprietary software. I can't find a free software solution. So, you know, 99% um, of everything I do uses free software. But sometimes I use proprietary software. I can't find a, a decent free software solution. So I'll give you an example. Um, I, over the Christmas break, I wanted to play some some multiplayer gaming. I wanted to do some. I wanted to go and play some online kind of like first person shooters. No offense to any of the people who make the games for, for uh, free software games, like um, Alien Arena and Tenebrain and things like that, but those games are not really for me. Uh, they didn't really get me going. I played Call of Duty Black Ops 2, and it's proprietary software, but I had a much better time doing that because I couldn't find something that, that met my needs. Um, so to me, like, you know, it's horses for courses. We should welcome everybody. We should be as open and welcoming to people who only want a free software operating system and only have free software on their system. And we should be welcoming to people who want to use Steam or Skype or whatever else on top of it as well. That's my view. Um, Sepisode, is there a plan to make cute applications look native under the Ubuntu desktop? As an example, Ubuntu uh, one client, which was written in cute, looks extremely ugly. Um, there are no current plans to do this, but it wouldn't surprise me if this will be done in the future. Um, the, 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 the theming on the cute components for the phone is just beautiful. Uh, in fact, I, um, part of the reason why I have an answer to this is because I, I asked my boss, Rick Spencer, and, um, you know, whether this was something we were going to work on. And he said, you know, maybe in the future we'll, we'll work on this. Uh, I'm not sure if there's, I don't think there's any fixed plans to do this, but I hope that we do. Um, I don't think the Ubuntu One client is particularly ugly, but I agree that it doesn't look particularly integrated with the system. Uh, okay, um, Imthic2, how many employees work in a Canonical? Uh, I think we're just under 600 now. Yeah, the company's grown quite a bit. When I joined, there was like, I think it was 50. It's been a, been a hell of a ride. Guest40781, why is everyone building a mobile OS? Google, Mozilla, and now Ubuntu? Um, I think that it's just an area that people find interesting. Uh, um, you know, I think Google, it depends on the timeline when people did this. I think Google did it because they saw an opportunity to build an alternative to iOS, uh, and they did very well. Uh, I think Mozilla got into the game because they felt they could build an alternative to both Android and iOS, and it's the same thing with Canonical. Um, we believe that there is a great opportunity for something that um, is beautiful and open. Um, Android isn't particularly open. Uh, uh, well, sorry, Android is is not particularly beautiful and more open, and iOS is not uh, open uh, but beautiful. And we believe that uh, the Ubuntu OS can can take the best of both and and eliminate the worst of both. Uh, Okay, Deluxo. I've read that the minimum requirements for the Ubuntu phone is ARM 9, since ARM is listed by ARM v18. So which one is it? Um, since ARM is listed by ARM v18, which one is it? I have a phone with ARM v7. Will it support the Ubuntu OS on my phone? Uh, to be honest with you, I'm not sure. I'm not sure of the specifics of that. Um, the best thing to do is probably to reach out uh, in the Ubuntu-phone channel and ask one of the developers. Um, Zuba's route. How long is Ubuntu phone in development now, and how and how many Canonical employees knew, knew about it? I already posted this, but with no question prefix. Sorry, it's okay. Um, it, it, the phone had been in development. I mean, it's been an idea at Canonical for probably three or four years. Um, it really, in earnest, a bunch of design work was done over the last you know two or three years. Um, but what we do at Canonical is uh, we work on lots of different things, and then where the customer demand is um, in terms of products. Uh, we then like focus on those areas. So, you know, there was a great opportunity. Uh, you know, Mark Shelworth made an assessment of the market and said, you know, this is this is the time we need to jump with the phone. So, like every, it was all hands on deck with the phone. So it's been pretty intense on the phone, I'd say, for the last probably year. Um, but uh, it's been an idea and a, and a concept uh, for for a long time internally. In terms of how many people knew about it. Um, 
I would say that certainly pretty much all of the Ubuntu engineering team, all of the product strategy team knew about it, and obviously most of the business team, probably most people in Canonical knew about it. Um, uh, what about Vala? Uh, there's no plans to ship Vala on the phone as a default platform, but again, that might be something you can install as an after fact thing. Uh, Imthic2, which browser is installed by default on the Ubuntu phone? I have no idea. I'm not sure. Guest45897, would Ubuntu for phone have an app, uh, have in app advertisements like in Android, which is good for developers to monetize their apps? This is not something I, I don't believe this is something that we've formally been working on as part of the phone project. I think this is something, again, that um, a phone manufacturer would decide on. Um, but I'm not aware of any advertising per se around people writing Ubuntu applications that come from the Ubuntu archives. So far, I haven't heard anything about that, which, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's not going to be the case. Uh, Chris underscore underscore underscore. Sorry if I didn't hear this earlier, but what about apps from Android? Uh, should developers create new apps for Ubuntu phone? Do you believe that there's going to be uh, enough development dev supporters for new apps? Thanks. Um, so let me take a sip. So I think that. Um, First of all, yes, I mean, we'll be encouraging people to write applications for the Ubuntu phone. Um, but I think that, that, and I think there will be a development community for a few reasons. One is, um, I don't want to be mean towards, uh, towards Android or iOS, but it's just not fun writing applications for the iPhone or for Android. Um, who wants to write applications in Objective-C or Java? Like, no one wants to do that. You want to write language. People want to write using fun and interesting and typically high-level toolkits. Uh, so I think the development platform is is nicer. You can squeeze more juice out of uh, out of your applications because you don't have to rely on a Java virtual machine, as an example, with Android. Um, but also, we have a, we have a fantastic development community who who are building applications for Ubuntu today, and I think they'll be interested in the phone as well. Um, but the other thing is that I think that as time has gone on, people. Like, no one loves their Android phone. No one loves it. They, they like it. I, I kind of see Android phones in the, in the same way I see Windows for a lot of people. It's kind of like it's there, and it's OK, and it's not necessarily bad. But it's just meh. Uh, a lot of people love their iPhones. And Apple have done a, kudos to Apple. They've done a pretty good job there. Um, I think people will love the Ubuntu phone, and they'll want to write applications for it. Um, the other thing is that with our support of HTML5, um, I think there'll be a, a world of web developers who want to get into their phone, into the uh, application game. And we've already built fantastic web support, uh, web app support um, in Ubuntu. So you know you can uh, integrate web apps with the messaging menu and the launcher and all that kind of stuff. So uh, I think there's an opportunity with, with web developers. There's an opportunity for people who just want to write applications for a platform that they love. And it's just going to be a more pleasurable platform to people to use. And I, just, I think that we'll also build a fun and engaging community around people who write applications for the platform as well. Um, Fiber code. A mobile OS lives and dies on the abundance of well-designed and useful applications. Does Canonical have any plans to provide useful APIs to develop native applications like Google Maps in app building? Yes, we do. And that's what the SDK is going to be there to do, um, is to provide many of these APIs. Uh, Tux Kale, do you uh, now which kernel? Do you know? Oh, do you know which kernel thirteen oh four will look most likely run? Thanks for the great answer earlier. No problem. Happy to help. Um, in terms of the specific kernel version, uh, I can check. I mean, I don't know what's going to be the final. You take the current kernel version in thirteen oh four and probably iterate on a few versions, and that's probably going to be it. Um, Jose uh, says uh, Dan S asked, "Say to assume that there'll be a really cool guitar app available for the Ubuntu phone." <laughs> I hope so. Um, you know, I'd like to write some software for the Ubuntu phone, but uh, you know, whether it's going to be barbecue software or guitar software, or whatever, there will be some written. Uh, I also really want an Ubuntu accomplishments client for the phone. That'd be awesome. Uh, Nico Carbon. It appears Valve is building a Linux Steambox gaming console. Is Canonical somehow involved in this project? Um, I'm not sure. I don't. I haven't caught up with the person who owns a relationship between um, uh, Valve and Canonical for uh, since since over the Christmas period, uh, so I don't know to, to the extent that Canonical is involved in the Steambox initiative. Um, what I do know is that um, 
you know, we've had a really great engagement with Valve, you know, so, you know, they came to us, uh, they were interested in, obviously, Steam running on Ubuntu, and we, we, we've invested a lot of resources in helping to achieve that, so there's been some changes to Unity for full screen gaming, uh, working with Valve about how they use things like the application indicators, how they, um, you know, package it up and release it, and all that kind of stuff. Um, so, we have a really great relationship with Valve, and um, I've, I'm not sure if that extends to the Steam box, but it wouldn't surprise me if it does. At Genstall, will the speed in Unity improve? Will Unity 2D come back? So the speed in Unity is definitely going to be improved. It's, it's, I mean, Unity has is, is got to continually improve and, uh, and evolve for, to be something that people want to use. Um, and Unity, of course, is not, now, is not just something we have on the desktop. It's something that we have on the desktop and the phone and potentially the form factors as well. I mean, obviously the TV. So I think you're going to start seeing more and more performance improvements. The way Unity is built is that it's essentially a pretty singular code base. Um, and it's based upon a series of libraries. So for example, there's a library called libcolumbus. And libcolumbus is used for, um, it's basically where search lives. So when you search for something in Unity, it'll use libcolumbus. Um, so when we make improvements and performance improvements to libcolumbus, it then benefits Unity across all of the form factors. So um, you, you're definitely going to see speed improvements. One thing that we're going to be announcing quite soon um, is going to be some improvements to how the dash and scopes work. Um, and that's going to be something that we're going to be discussing in the next two or three weeks. Uh, and there's going to be some performance improvements there and some feature improvements as well. Uh, Nico Carbon, is there a possibility of an Ubuntu phone ISO uh, for already launched in popular phones like the Galaxy S3 or the Note 2? Um, that's probably going to come, but it's going to be in a while. I'm going to spin through some of these more a little more quickly so we can get through all these questions. Um, blah, 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 where is it? Next question. Uh, Jose uh, says, Barefoot Courier asked, is there any news from the battery life and memory focused on focus work on the Nexus 7. Excited to see uh, Ubuntu improve, improve in this area. I know there's been a ton of work going on. There's been some work to get the benchmarking in place um, around, um, around, you know, so putting benchmarks in place so when uh, when we make improvements we can see how well we're doing uh, on the Nexus 7. There's been a lot of really great, great work going on there. Um, there's been some posts from Alex, um, who's been managing a lot of this work. Um, I'm not sure if they've been on the planet Ubuntu. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask Daniel Holback on my team to sync up with the team and post a summary of a lot of the work that's been going on there so you folks can check it out. Um, KPJ, question, can I get a terminal on the new phone OS? Um, I don't know. Uh, I assume so. Uh, I'd imagine so. Chris underscore underscore underscore. Thanks for the previous answer. No problem. Is there a simulator available so we can start developing and testing apps? If no, when will it be available? Um, there is no emulator available right now, but you can go and download the SDK preview uh, from developer.windows.com. You can start writing applications. Uh, app get installed. Will a sandbox and software like Sandboxy uh, for Windows come to Linux so you can run software in different sandboxes? Uh, uh, it will be really useful to have. So yes, one, of the, one piece of work that we're working on right now is one of, one, one of the challenges we have right now with Ubuntu is when you build a, a package, um, installing that package, the package management software runs as root. Um, so conceivably, someone could build a malicious package. That's the reason why you shouldn't just download random devs off the internet uh, from like forums or whatever else. Um, so we have this process whereby when you submit an application to go into the software center, if it's a commercial application, Canonical will review it. Uh, if it's an open source application, then the application review board will review it. The problem is that the ARB, the Application Review Board, uh, have always struggled to keep up with the queue, despite their best intentions. Uh, they were never really set up for success. So one of the things that we're working on right now is building an end-to-end -end process in which you can submit, uh, submit a package, and it will go through a series of automated tests um, to make sure that it's working. Um, and then it will run within an AppArmor sandbox. Um, so it won't be able to do bad things to your computer. And the sandboxing is going to apply to a bunch of different areas. It's going to apply to the application itself, to you know, to dbus, to g settings, all these kinds of areas. So, uh, yes, this is work that's actively going on. The first pieces of that work are going to be ready for thirteen or four, but you won't really see any differences with it. But for thirteen ten, we should start seeing uh, a first implementation of this. 
Uh, uh, Irvis Tusha, phone looks good and practical, but what artificial intelligence like Siri or Google Voice? Uh, as Mark demonstrated in the video, you'll be able to use um, voice control with it, with the HUD on the phone. So that's something that's going to be coming. RJP, um, how is the phone OS going to handle swipe in an application that requi requires left and right swipes like a book reader app? Will it be confused between a system swipe or an application swipe? I'm not sure specifically about this, but I think the difference is, is uh, if you probably if you swipe within the boundaries of the of the edges, then you can flick between the pages. An example, the the uh, the the thing you saw in the demo uh, of like the launch coming out from the left is when you swipe past the edge of the screen. I think that's going to be the key distinction. Uh, Let me find the next question. Alpha, why don't we have a create installation disk option in Ubuntu so that there's no need to download it? Um, you could do, but most times when people have got Ubuntu installed, that's it. They're done. They don't necessarily need to install it on the machine. Uh, and you can just go to Ubuntu.com and, and get everything you need. Alan Bell, what is that drink? Uh, this is a mixture of moonshine, vodka, and tequila. That was a joke, by the way. It's coffee. <laughs> I don't know if you folks have seen it. I'm obsessed with Moonshiners right now on TV. I don't know if you have, any of you have been watching it. What a great show. Um, Jose says, Sam asked, um, you said earlier that Python was, uh, has performance enhancements. How come, on, how come on getting started with Ubuntu development states? We recommend using Python GDK to create applications for Ubuntu. Will QML be coming to the Ubuntu desktop as a recommended language to develop with? It may well be. Um, I personally think it would be good for us to recommend a consistent platform across all of our uh, form factors. Um, but our policy in Ubuntu has always been the same. We make a set of recommendations. So for example, we recommend today that you write applications using Python and GTK. But that doesn't mean you can't write applications using Qt uh, in, with C++ or QML, or use Tickle TK or C, C Sharp, or write a Django app. You know, Just because we make a set of recommendations doesn't mean that we're not going to provide the, the alternatives available as, as well. Uh, Sakrambu. Any chance on getting the preview feature in the dash to be backported to 1204? Uh, that's probably not going to happen. Uh, app get installed. Does Ubuntu come with any closed source software by default? No. Uh, the only software that is closed by default that comes in Ubuntu that uh, is uh, binary blob firmware that you need to for some graphics drivers to work and wireless drivers. Um, werewolves, do you consider the swipe from size model to be discoverable, uh, as in a new user who is expecting some kind of prompt or visual cue? Uh, how will, will they know what to do? I imagine that the phone will ship with some kind of you know, tutorial like you get with Android that shows you how to use it. Um, um, a lot of software isn't particularly discoverable, um, but once you learn how to use it, then you're all good to go. Nexus. One item spoke about uh, with Android is fragmentation. Is there a concern from Canonical's perspective regarding fragmentation once device manufacturers start working with the platform? That's always a risk for a general purpose operating system. Um, you know, I'm not going to deny it. But the difference, I think, with, with Ubuntu Phone is that um, the configurability of each implementation is more from a visual perspective. Um, so I think we'll have a lot more consistency Anyone who's got two different, like my wife's Android phone and my phone, are completely different. Um, and I don't think we'll have as much of that with a Ubuntu phone, but who knows? Laurel uh, one, what can we expect in Ubuntu thirteen or four? Seen on the mobile, seen on the mobile Ubuntu. Uh, so there won't be a thirteen four release for um, for the phone. Um, there may be an image that you can play with, but it won't be like a formal release. Uh, we won't be releasing the phone in the same way that we release the desktop, uh, where there's a brand new release every six months that you can install. Um, in terms of what you can see in Ubuntu 13.04 uh, on the desktop, then we're going to see a, a series of improvements to the dash. There's some performance in improvements. We're going to see um, improvements in terms of, um, uh, there's going to be some for, uh, improvements in terms of uh, uh, an additional number of scopes that are going to be shipped with Ubuntu, so your searches are better. The search, the search quality in the dash is going to be better in 13.04. The app armor installation is going to be landing um, and improved. Uh, those are some of the some, some of the highlights. Uh, 
J15H, why my question is not answering? Am I blocked muted? No, I just probably didn't see it. That's all. There's no conspiracy here. J15H, calm down. Android Google has some design, UI design guidelines. Is Canonical planning to come up with something similar? Yes, we are. It's just not done yet. There you go. Question answered. Jose, is that a Penguin's band on your T-shirt? Yeah, this is actually, uh, I don't know if some of you, hang on, let me, this is actually a Songbird T-shirt. Folks, remember Songbird, that media player? This is one of those, I don't really wear computer T-shirts very often, uh, but this is one of those rare situations where I found a T-shirt that I, that I dug. Uh, App getting stalled, what do you think about my nickname? I think it's cool. So we've got about five or six minutes, uh, and then I'm going to have to wrap it up. Get your phone, get your phones in, get your questions in. Nico Carbone, how will updates to Ubuntu Phone be handled? Will there be an Ubuntu Phone LTS, for example, and will will it go through the carriers? This is a good question. It's an unanswered question, as far as I'm aware. Um, like right now, when you update your operating system, you do, you know, update manager pops up and it updates your package list and then it installs a bunch of updates. You don't necessarily want to do that with phones, uh, otherwise it's going to be sucking up people's bandwidth. So, you know, for example, with Android or with iOS, what happens is um, a big software update, kind of like a service pack in the Windows world, goes out, goes out every so often that pr that provides a significant new upgrade, kind of like an LTS. I think that that's going to be the approach that we're going to use um, for Ubuntu Phone, and then application updates will have happen on a per application basis. Um, Popey, will Ubuntu phone ship with media pre-installed, perhaps some severed fifth? <laughs> we want people to use the phone, Popey. Uh, <laughs> it'd be great if severed fifth was like a ringtone. For those of you who don't know what severed fifth is, it's, uh, it's a metal band that um, I played in until quite recently. I just wrapped up the band just before uh, um, my first baby was born. Uh, but yeah, I don't think put in Heavy metal on a phone is necessarily a particularly great idea, at least by default. Maybe Gangnam Style, maybe that would work. Um, J15H, that's about root permission. I already answered that earlier on. Uh, I already answered also the question about, uh, Baz's question about downloading the image for the Nexus 7. Um, Robin Gloucester 1, why is 7fifth.com down? Yeah, this is ironic. It says, if you go to 7fifth.com, it says it works, whereas it obviously doesn't. There's just a, there's a, uh, I've switched um, hosting providers, and I just haven't had a chance to go in there and fix it. And with the band not running right now, frankly, it's just become a pretty low priority, but I need to fix that. Uh, app getting install. When will ButterFS uh, come to Ubuntu? Before 2020? Whoo, ambitious. I don't know. I don't know if, if ButterFS is going to be on by default. Um, I, I, I honestly I have no idea. The best person to ask about that is Steve Langisak, Slang, S. Langisak, uh, in the Ubuntu Develop channel. Gymnastics will be uh, will there be apps uh, av available to integrate with Ubuntu One? Uh, sync with the desktop, absolutely. So um, Ubuntu One has this really cool um, feature called the Ubuntu One database, U1DB, um, and it's basically a place where you can save application data. So you can save settings there, as an example. And then it synchronizes across your devices. And then, of course, you can use file sync. Ubuntu One is like a, a collection of technologies. You can Most people think of it in terms of file synchronization. But it's not only file sync, but it also can handle payments. And it can handle um, like U1DB with settings. Um, you can use it to publish, all kinds of stuff. Um, so yes, all of that will be fully integrated into the phone. Jose says, uh, Vib asked. Uh, what's the selling point of Ubuntu phones for regular users? To convince them from switching from ecosystem-rich OSs to a new one? Is it just the new clean UI? Or is it the Ubuntu phone, or, or is Ubuntu phone supposed to be just for Linux enthusiasts? It's a great question. It's, so first of all, it's not just for Linux enthusiasts. Um, it's designed as a general purpose phone, uh, but it's also a phone that should be of interest to enterprise users as well. The way I kind of characterize it, and I kind of mentioned this earlier on, is the way I see things right now is that there's basically two main competitors in the industry. There's Apple and Google. Apple has the iOS and the iPhone. Google has Android and Android phones. No one loves Android phones. Like, they're just kind of there. 
like I said earlier on, it kind of reminds me of Windows. It's just something that's okay, but no one really loves it. Um, people do love iOS. Uh, people love their iPhones. Like Apple, uh, and much as some of you will be balking at me right now, like it or not, people love iPhones. Um, iPhones are beautiful, but locked down. Android phones, in my view, are ugly and much more open. But Android phones aren't as open as you'd imagine. You can't really influence Android. And uh, Ubuntu is a, you know, we have open governance and we have development processes and open blueprinting and we have the Ubuntu Developer Summit where we discuss this kind of stuff. Ubuntu is an operating system that you can influence, that you can participate in. So there's a good opportunity here for us to, uh, you know, with Ubuntu phone in the sense that it's a beautiful phone. I think uh, every, my view here and from what I've seen is a view shared with other people is it looks beautiful. It looks like a beautiful um, platform, um, but it's got the openness of Ubuntu and the community of Ubuntu as well. And um, just a more pleasurable development um, platform and ecosystem. So that I think is the, is, is the attraction. Now I'm going to blast through these final questions because uh, I need to wrap up. Uh, God, there's a lot of final questions. Uh, okay, Nick of Carbone, uh, without a JVM, how will the different architectures ARM v v uh, versus x86 be handled by the apps? Qt uh, uh, and HTML5, all of that runs on multiple architectures. Sam. Uh, asks, are there plans to make a utility convert Ubuntu phone apps to Java or Objective-C for devs who want to hit all major platforms? That's not a plan right now. Uh, gymnastics, as far as I know, U1DB struggles with collisions. How will this be solved? Um, I'm not aware of, I, was, I wasn't aware with it struggling with collisions. That's a question really for the Ubuntu 1 team. Um, Zuba's route. Uh, how much will the Ubuntu phone influence the development of the Ubuntu desktop? I would love to see some of the uh, phone features on the desktop. A lot of the benefits that you're going to see in the phone, you will see on the desktop because it's a shared code base with Unity. Uh, when will Ubuntu uh, J15H? When will there be an Ubuntu mobile app showdown? Uh, that will happen when the SDK is finally released. We're not going to do an app showdown until the SDK is out there and we have design guidelines for phone apps. So I'm hoping that we'll do one probably in the 1310 in the 1310 cycle. Breadjock asks, will Ubuntu phone run the same background task, cron jobs, demons, as other desktop Ubuntu, or is that separated? Uh, probably not, because of battery considerations. Um, some of these processes will, and background tasks will run, but not all of them. Uh, Android Rock says, I love Android. I pretty much guessed that from your nickname. J15H, if you use Android 4 and above, me thinks Holo UI is better than the iOS. I'm running the latest Android OS, and I'm, like I say, I don't love it. Uh, Alpha, I think the default PDF document reader in Ubuntu is not as good as Foxy on Windows. Is there a possibility of making it as good? Uh, not sure if this is a proper question here. No, let's find out that question. Uh, that's really something that you probably want to direct to the GNOME community because they build events, which is their primary uh, PDF reader that we ship in Ubuntu. Uh, Chameleon says, thanks for your time. I only caught the last half hour since I was stuck working. No problem. Just so everybody knows, these are going to be a weekly. It's going to be a weekly video cast. Um, I'm going to be doing it probably on a Wednesday or Thursday. Um, next week, I'm not going to be doing one because I'm going to be at CES exhibiting, but I will be posting some video and some blog entries about that, so stay tuned. Uh, you, can, you can check out my blog at johnobacon.org or follow me on Twitter. I'm at johnobacon. Um, Android rocks. Any plans to port Android's Dalvik VM to Ubuntu for phones? I don't think so. Uh, I'm not aware of any plans. Fiber code. Question, have you used a Nexus phone like a Galaxy Nexus uh, Nexus 4 with ICS? If so, can you claim the interface is not beautiful and polished? I have used a Nexus phone, and I claim that the interface is not beautiful and polished. Um, J15H, a Java friend of mine told me that uh, app developer documentation links to Ubuntu.com is broken. Huh, I'll check in to see whether if that's broken or not. All right, folks, I need to wrap it up. I've got a call. I've got to go on in one minute. Thank you, everybody. And uh, the video for this will be available on YouTube. Thank you for my partner, to my partner in crime, Jose, for uh, hosting it as normal. And uh, I'll speak to you all soon.